Okay, this is an amazing book report. This is a book that does not talk about what's going on in the spirit realm. It doesn't talk about spirits and the power of your soul. But it talks about the people who make money in this world and how they learn how to control human minds. This is a really, really cool book. This is really fascinating. Okay, just one excerpt. How to Break Up With Your Phone by Katherine Price. Now again, this is not going to talk about spirit things, which is an important topic. Page 26 and 27. Phones and most apps are deliberately designed without stopping cues. Telephones and apps are not going to alert us when we've had enough. They're going to, not going to say, okay, you set a 10 minute limit. You've been on for longer than 10 minutes. Which is why it's so easy to accidentally binge on connection with the phone. On a certain level, we know that what we're doing is making us feel gross because we're stuck on the phone. But instead of stopping our brains, okay, don't you use the term brain, that's a pharmacological thing. Your mind, your mind is part of your invisible soul. Your mind decides that the solution is to seek more pleasure. Brain and dopamine are not the primary foundational reality. But anyway, you can think in those terms of DNA and dopamine and brain, but that's not wise because you have an afterlife and you are in control of who you associate with and how you spend your time. Okay, so on a certain level, we know that what we're doing is making us feel gross, but instead of stopping our our minds decide to continue with pleasure and we check our phones again and again and again when this happens we tend to blame our binges on a lack of willpower another way of saying that we blame ourselves now it is true and appropriate to blame ourselves psalm 1 says you can plant yourself by a stream of safety, or you can sit among those who scorn the idea of spirits, a supreme spirit of love. You can sit down with people who are ignoring basic principles of your own soul. So we are to blame and when this happens, we tend to blame our binges on a lack of willpower, another way of saying that we blame ourselves, which is partly the responsibility, because our attacks are inside of ourselves and from our peer group, and also from individual spirits, invisible spirits. So here's a great point. What we don't realize is that technology designers deliberately manipulate our responses to pleasure to make it extremely difficult for us to stop using their products known as brain hacking this is essentially behavioral design it's behavioral modification from pleasure to pleasure to pleasure this is essentially behavioral design based on brain chemistry now forget the chemistry stuff. This is calling the mind and the emotions towards pleasures and comforts rather than work and labor and the cross. This is the scripture that says people live as enemies of the cross of Christ. You know, not just do it, not, not rise up and be excellent, not do the excellent thing, but do the comfortable thing. This is not brain chemistry, I'm sorry. This is 
the care of the soul, calling the soul through the crucifixion to the resurrection. No pain, no gain. Okay, <clears throat> brain hacking. Once you know how to recognize its signs, you'll see it all over your phone. Your phone is designed to draw you from pleasure to pleasure to pleasure, to pleasure, to interest, to curiosity, to passions, to angers, to more pleasures. Now, check this out. In 2017, 60 Minutes aired a fascinating interview between Anderson Cooper and Ramsey Brown, founder of a startup called Dopamine Labs that creates brain hacking code for app companies. The goal is to keep people glued to an application by figuring out exactly when the app should do something to make you feel a little extra awesome, explain Brown, who has a background in neuroscience and, for the record, comes across as a thoughtful and unevil kind of guy. Brown offered the example of Instagram, which he says has created code that deliberately holds back on showing users new likes. so that it can deliver a bunch of likes in a sudden rush at the most effective moment possible, meaning the moment at which seeing new likes will discourage you from closing the app. And when he says you, Brown means you, you specifically. So there's this specific design to keep you connected with the application. And this is a very, very deliberate, focused human behavioral modification practice. As he explained to Anderson Cooper, there's an algorithm somewhere that predicted, hey, for this user right now, who is experimental subject 79B3 in experiment 231, we think we can see an improvement in his behavior if you give him, if you give it to him in this burst instead of that burst. You are part of a set of controlled experiments that are happening in real time across you and millions of other people. We're guinea pigs? Ask Cooper. This is this guy's getting interviewed. So Anderson Cooper says, we're guinea pigs. And Brown says, you're guinea pigs. You're guinea pigs in the box, pushing the button, and sometimes getting the likes. And they're doing this to keep you in the box, pushing buttons. Interestingly, Brown who is one of the few technology insiders who agreed to speak with 60 Minutes on the record, also created an app, and this is so cool, look at this. He created an app called Space that was meant to encourage people to spend less time on their phones by creating a 12 second delay before social media apps would open. Brown called this a moment of Zen. The point was to give people a chance to change their minds about being in their phone. But then the app store initially refused to sell space, which is basically a self-control app that causes you to spend less time on your phone. The App Store initially refused to sell this space app. They rejected it from the App Store because they told us 
any app that would encourage people to use other apps or their iPhones less was unacceptable for distribution in the App Store. If you are distributing an application that causes people to use their phones less, that's unacceptable. If you are setting up an application that causes to pe people to use their phones less, that is unacceptable and they won't distribute it. They did not want us to give out this thing that was going to let people, that going to make people be less stuck on their phones. 60 Minutes later reported that a few days after our story first aired, Apple called to tell us it had a change of heart and made space available in its app store. This is a book report, and this book shows you how to protect your minds and the minds of your children. It's not talking about the spirit powers that are operating over all institutions, all churches, all governments, all corporations, and all organizations. There are spirit powers that start to invade when you start getting organized in humanity. Only your little honesty group of friends in Havira and in Eucharist can actually defeat many of these things. It is the small gathering and the children and the newcomers in the small gathering who are all being honest about the goofy urges and pleasures and passions and hatreds and fears when we're being real together in a closed private group of friends with children and everybody together hi if you are content in your singleness we want to check in and send good energy to you because you're being in your singleness if you're in a marriage we want to check in with you and say what's difficult and what are the problems and how can we help out to make your marriage more snuggly and wonderful the Havira, the group of honest friends in a closed private meeting, that is the victory. There's no way to build a giant institution or a big movement that makes a victory. How to break up with your phone. Great book report.